Hey Giants fans, Sean O'Hara here with our new special teams coach, Coach Mike Gabriel. How do we, am I pronouncing that right? What are we, what are we calling you here? Uh, Gobes, just call me Gobes, Gobi, any, any form of Gobriel. Gobi, all right. Yeah. Well, perfect, that's fitting, because Gobi, we're gonna go get in this car right here, this all new Cadillac Electric Lyric, and uh, we're gonna take a little drive around. I know you know the area here. Yeah. After being with the Jets, you know the lay of the MetLife land. No but, question, uh, man. Let's, uh, let's get to know each other a little bit. And awesome. Let's, let's take this whip out. Looking forward to it. You've been with the Jets the last couple of years, so this it's going to be another home game for you, basically. Yeah, a lot of familiarity with the stadium, a lot of familiarity with the drive out here. So it's pretty dang cool to, to be able to do it on this side now. Being familiar with MetLife is, is huge, especially for the kicking game, because the wind, I mean, it's it can be challenging at times. What, what makes it so challenging in MetLife? Well, without getting too much into uh, kind of the advantage that we can gain with it, but you know, number one, you're in the uh, you're in the Northeast, and the weather is something that will consistently test you. You know, one of the things that I didn't necessarily realize till I got out here was how many wet games we have, and how often it's raining, and that obviously plays a factor into the kicking game. Um, and then you combine that with the wind. You know, the ball trajectory, the types of drops you do, um, what you're asking your specialist to do, and even how you can tie your scheme into that is all important, which is going to help me from being uh, with the Jets past few years, just obviously having a good understanding of everything that kind of goes on in that stadium. What was your knowledge of like the Jets and the Giants and kind of this area before you came up here? You know, uh, just being born and raised in Los Angeles, California, um, I can't say that it, uh, I had a ton of familiarity, but obviously following the NFL and being a fan of the game and, and loving the game, you know, you obviously look at, you know, some of the most storied organizations in the league and the Giants have always had that appeal to me. When I first got the opportunity to talk to Dave's, it was, gosh dang, this is the New York football Giants. Yeah. You know, pretty dang cool to, to be able to say that. And, uh, you know, just tremendous respect for the organization, for the owners, you know, everybody that's affiliated with this uh, with this building. It's, you can tell that, you know, they, they treat the game of football the right way. And, uh, you know, they the expectations are high and as they should be but the resources are here to win. So excited to do that. So you're a defensive end at UCLA. Yep. You know what it's like to play special teams as a defensive lineman and kind of experience all that. How much of that has kind of helped you in your coaching career? You know, a ton. I think when you talk about special teams, it's the purest form of football. Block destruction, block ability, ability to rush, ability to make tackles in space, how you approach a ball carrier, speed, change of direction. All those things are attributes of any good football player, whether they be defensive or offensive players. and to me, you know, that experience is invaluable. You know, obviously playing the game and, you know, early on in my career, I actually always had a primary position, whether it was outside backers, uh, defensive line, inside backers. And um, that familiarity obviously plays into, you know, kind of how I conduct practice in terms of individual drill work and, uh, you know, also the valuation process, you know, kind of certain things that I look for that I understand how they'll transition uh, to this game. You mentioned the evaluation process. When you all right, you get hired by the Giants now and you start coming in, do you go back and look at all of the special teams plays from last season and kind of figure out like, all right, what positions do I have set already? And then now who do I need to try to add position wise? Yeah, you have to. And, and you know, it was really cool. Obviously, it was playing against uh, the New York Giants while I was with the Jets and the game plan uh, aspect of it. You know, you obviously have an understanding of what type of personnel the Giants organization had. And then, you know, when you get in the building and you start looking at a little bit closer look uh, of the personnel that was here, you kind of see the little nuances that make um, each player tick. And then you obviously, in your mind, have somewhat of a scheme understanding of what you want to do and what you want to accomplish. And then you start to play chess and obviously move guys around um, to where you can take advantage of them to be able to be the best versions of themselves. Let's fast forward the drafts coming up. As a player, you used to always have a saying, like the higher you get drafted, the less special teams you probably have to play. What round do you start like chirping into Joe Shane's ear and saying, hey, here are some guys that I'm looking at. Here are some guys that I like. It, you know, it's funny. It's like, I think early on, you start to think that predominantly you get a lot of hungry guys that are in the fourth and seventh, but that, that's not the truth. You get some hungry guys that are in the first round. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough uh, to where I've been with organizations that have used first and second rounders. And uh, sometimes this game and the transition to go from college to the NFL, it takes some time. Um, and something that sometimes helps these players accelerate that, that process of being able to contribute in their primary roles is playing on special teams. 
So whether they're first rounders, second rounders, third round, it doesn't matter to me. You know, I'm going to evaluate all of them and see, you know, if they did contribute on special teams, what positional um, flex they could have for us, just in the case that they aren't uh, a starter for us. How tough is it being a special teams coach now with all these rule changes? I feel like every year I've got to kind of go back and like, all right, what's new this year? What can we do? What can't you do? What kind of challenges does that present as a coach and trying to educate the players? It, it, to me, that's one of the most uh, fun parts about the game that it's evolving and tremendous respect for how the NFL is trying to make this game safer for the players um, for longevity. Um, and, you know, obviously still want to put a good product out there. And to be honest, it keeps you hungry to obviously find the new details that you could take advantage of. Uh, the rule changes, like you say, is something that you always have to educate your players on and not just once. I think you have to stay connected to it. I think the second you kind of deviate from um, emphasizing rules, that's when the bottom falls out and you see guys struggle in moments of truth. It's it's no fault to the player. I truly believe you get what you emphasize. So um, staying connected to all those things. But like I said, that, that to me is one of the most fun, fun parts of coaching. With the Jets last year, you guys had the best kickoff coverage in the league. How do you accomplish something like that? Well, I think uh, with all my units, the one thing you're going to see is that we're going to be so fundamental based that we're going to win with technique, effort, and violence. Um, I think when you center your scheme around that and you get guys to play at their greatest level, you know they're the ones that ultimately bring the scheme to life. I don't cross that white line. They do. And I think when there's a genuine care for their teammates and a style that they could uphold, uh, you'll end up having a good product out there and be highly ranked. Effort, technique, and violence. I like it. That sounds great. Well, there was no violence on this ride whatsoever. This That's was smooth. really smooth. <laughs> Gopes, thanks so much, man. Appreciate your time, man. This is fun. You. Can't wait to see that violence. No doubt, man. On Sunday at MetLife. Best component. Giants fans, uh, this interview is brought to you by Cadillac. You can visit your Tri-State Cadillac dealership and drive the all-new, all-electric Lyric presented by Cadillac.